there, I'm Lisa Doyle at Jrockliffe Realtors, and I have for you guys a special guest. So we get so many questions um, from clients, from friends, from you know everyone asking about the market, asking about interest rates, what's changing, where's the market headed, right. all that. So I have a special guest. This is Daryl. Uh, he well, is a, he is a mortgage lender. So tell him your company and um, uh, the company I work for is a company called Diversify Capital Funding. Mm -hmm. uh, been doing this 26 years. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been here for five years now with uh, Jay Rockliffe mm -hmm. in the Danville and more recently in the Blackhawk office. Yeah, very good. So what I wanted to do is have you come come and share just to give our clients an update, right? right. So interest rates, of course, the big um, threat of rise and a lot of what's happened in the market right now. So right. explain to them a little bit about where we are right now. And then I want to talk, have you explain a little bit about how rates rise. Uh, but where are oh, we at excellent. right now? Well, in terms of interest rates, um, one of the things that's happened in the last couple of days is the fact that um, rates trade, trade actually at a very technical level. So mortgages are bought and sold on a daily basis, and one of the things they compete with it, for the same investment dollars is like a 10-year government bond. And there are certain technical levels that if those are pierced can have a big impact in terms of the direction of rates. And the last couple of days, that rate of 3.04% has gone up for the first time in a very long time. And so the impact of that is we could go ahead and bounce off of that and go below, right. but there is the very real possibility that we might have established a new trading range, which means now we start trading higher than that. The impact on people's mortgages, we could very well see rates go another eighth or a quarter percent higher in the very near term. Right, exactly. So, and we've gone up a little bit in the last six months. Yes. Um, you know, I know that the lowest I saw a client get a loan back in the day was like 3.4, 3.5 maybe. Yeah, and even right a little now, bit lower than that. Yeah. yeah, even a little bit lower than that. Yes. Yeah, so we are right now, um, where are we at with a, um, I know you've got the difference between a jumbo and Right, so, so in our area, um, obviously, predominantly, there's a lot of loans that are above 679000 Right. That reason that $679,000 number is so important is that that's the maximum what we call the Fannie Mae loan amount. And that's the amount that uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the quasi public private entities that buy mortgages. Um, and for Contra Costa County, that is that amount, 679,000. Those rates, we've seen those rates go upwards to into the high 4% range. Um, for the loan amounts above that, what we call uh, investor loans or jumbo loans, mm -hmm. uh, which is the vast majority of our area, those rates have certainly risen as well, but they're structured a little bit different than the Fannie Mae loans. And that allows banks to maybe hold those rates artificially low. Right. And so they those unfortunately have risen as well, but we're still in the low four percent range. Yeah, and, and the rates today are still so good compared Absolutely. to you know, in my thirty two career year career, our average I think has been more like seven percent, six Absolutely. and a half. Absolutely. So this is still historically great. Historically. It's just, we're just we're starting to edge up a little bit. Well and I think yeah. the thing that's important is that you know, buying a home is such an emotional process to begin with. And when you start, you start looking at that certain rate and all of a sudden, you know, it's another eighth or a quarter percent higher. Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, most people will usually, you know, they're going to buy rate, you know, they're going to buy, they still want to get the lowest interest rate. Of course. But very much the economy has a lot to do with that as well. Right. Job security and, and, yes. and we've seen growth, you know. The, it's job, the, our, our job, um, the job market right now is I, it's the best it's been in many many yeah. years, and that's what's driving that's what's driving the economy. That's what's mm -hmm. driving you know home prices in general. Exactly. And one thing I wanted you to touch on real quick is we have a lot of clients ask us about the Fed. So when right. you hear the Fed meeting and raising rates, um, that isn't where mortgage rates are impacted. So explain how that works a little okay. bit. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Good question. Mm -hmm. So in terms of interest rates. Um, when you hear the Federal Reserve raise rates, what they're basically raising is like what they call the overnight bank lending rate. And that's the rate that banks charge each other. So in essence, you know, people that will be immediately impacted are people with adjustable rate mortgages, certainly those with equity lines. Right. So when they hear the Federal Reserve raise rates a quarter of a percent, uh, that means essentially that the, their rate either went up that day or the following day by that amount. 30-year um, fixed mortgages have a longer time horizon so as a result, they're, they're, you know, their forecast is a lot further out in the future, and as a result, they're impacted by that as well. 
but they're more in turn they're more concerned with things like inflation right and things like that that's yeah. the big one the bond bond yeah. rates and inflation. Bond rates, okay right. so yeah so i just always wanted to share with people that they get a little bit edgy when of they course. think oh the federal reserve is talking about raising rates which that right. impacts mortgages eventually but not, right. In, right. not initially and yeah mm -hmm. and the other thing too that's important to keep in mind is you know, why is the Federal Reserve raising rates? Mm -hmm. And the reason they're raising the rates is because the economy's doing well. Right. And obviously they want to prevent inflation, and that's really the biggest, their biggest concern. And that rate has been running at like 2%, which is kind of their target rate. So we've been there now for the last couple of months, and if we stay at that rate, that they're more inclined to raise rates probably another two times this year. Exactly, okay, so keep, you know, keep a watch for that, and I'll keep you posted. One of the statistics that I wanted to share with everyone is because even though the tax laws don't impact you or right. your, your business necessarily, right. Not as much. it still impacts slightly because um, the, the biggest change that they made in the tax laws this year was that mortgage rates could be deducted up to 750000 instead right. of that million mark, which where we were. Right. right. And so a lot of people have called us in a panic that this is going to cause the market to fall, it's going to cause the market to change. We won't have the active market that, right. we, that we currently have. And actually, in our area, the opposite is what's happened this right. year so far. Um, and I think one of the biggest reasons for it is our East Bay market is so fueled by other parts of the Bay, um, buyers moving here. Yeah. And more and more buyers have said to me lately that because the prices are so much higher in places like the South Bay yeah. and the tax law change, that impacts them even further, right. that they're, they're driving here even more to, to buy homes in our East Bay. Without question. Yeah. I, an example would be... Um, I did a loan for a client that they moved from San Mateo. Right. And their ha what they were looking at, they ended up buying a house in Danville for $1.5 million. Okay. By comparison, what they would have gotten over there, a much smaller house, and they were putting their kids through private school. Right, of course. And the schools here, everybody knows it's fantastic. Exactly. They, it's actually cheaper for them to come over here and buy they're, they're paying less money out right now than that they did over there renting and putting their kids through private school. Of course, yeah. Our public school system is fantastic, which is what causes Absolutely. many people to come here. So one statistic I want to share with you guys. So I've had a lot of clients feel like the upper end. You know, a lot of um, clients that own expensive homes. Right. And they're concerned that the market's changing. And I have to tell you guys, it's, we're seeing the opposite so, so far this year. So last year, between January and April, over 2 million home sales in our East Bay, which our East Bay is like Daniel, San Ramon, right. the 685, clip, and the 24, so right. we're a pretty broad area. Right. There were 92 um, sales over a million last year between January 1st and April. Okay. So far this year, we've had 137, over 2 million close, and there's more over 2 million pending homes than I've ever seen in years. Right. So the high end is moving along just like everybody else. So it's, right. yeah, I just want you guys to know market conditions are strong. I don't see this our East Bay market changing for the worse? And people say, is this a bubble? Are we going to see a crash? It, I just it, don't see it. It's certainly not a bubble. Right. Uh, you know, obviously the bubble was created primarily by a lot of mortgage programs that, let's just face it, they weren't very responsible. Right. And that has been cleaned up. If anything, it's that pendulum's kind of swung back the other way, and it's actually much harder to get a mortgage now than it was before. Of course. Which, that that's why we're, we're not really in a bubble. So... You know, it's, the values are supported primarily by the great economy, right. great job market, and that's probably what's also driving the sales as well because people feel comfortable. Right, they're you confident. Know, they're getting raises. They have many more options that they don't like their job. They've got people beating down their door to hire them away. Exactly. So as a result, they're more confident, and you know that makes it easier for them to make that big purchase. Yeah, exactly. And I have a client, too, that's a high executive with Google, right. and he shared with me, we already know that the, all the tech companies are expanding, yes, Facebook, Google, all that, but he says they're bringing on you know, six, 7,000 new employees very quickly. Wow. So growth is crazy. So if you guys have questions, right now things are looking very good, very strong for our East Bay, but if you have personal questions, let us know. I'm Lisa Doyle. And of Darryl course, Nelson. Daryl Nelson, he can help you out. Give us a call. And I'll make sure to post the phone numbers of where you can reach Daryl and myself. All right, guys. Thanks Thank for tuning in. Thank Take you. care. Talk Thank to you soon. Bye.